Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Deadfire with me, Bregaton. Sure. All I did off camera is walk down the alley to see if Coda made the mistake of coming back, and he did. So my plan is to try to pickpocket him. Ahoy. But if that fails, I do have a plan B. More than my eyes be open. Well, I can't select them because the wolf is in the way. Okay, so that verifies my suspicion. We can't pickpocket while being observed. So, plan B. went far better than I expected. And we still don't have to fight this guy. Perfect. And we didn't lose what any for, reputation. I'll gladly take that. Let's go speak to Kamar. At the very least, I was expecting to lose reputation with the Principe, but... It worked out far better than I could have hoped. Any news worth telling? Tamar dusts off his shoulders. The Principe won't be bothering you anymore. Best news I've heard since I arrived on this rock. Zamar lowers his hands. They shake like they don't know where to go next. They go back up to his beard, this time less frenzied. What of Captain Redora? Zamar pulls the end of his mustache taut. Has she sobered up yet, or do we need to shake her by her ankles? Forget Redora. I'm the one who settled your pirate problem. Aye, but... Scratching at the back of his neck, Zamar glances farther down the thoroughfare of Queen's birth. Eh, much as I want to help Redora, it's time I started looking after myself. Matters being what they are, Redora's commission is yours, if you can afford it. Zamar smooths down his mustache and dislodges a small puff of sawdust. I might be interested in buying Redora's commission. That'll be the Iron Thunderer. A cannon well deserved of her name. Zamar beams with pride. Maybe she doesn't stand up to Rawatai standards, but she's got heart. So I wonder if that's a response to my background. For a thousand pyres, she'll crack a hull, scour a sail, or splinter a deck like an imp with something to prove. I'm assuming this is a good deal. Uh, this is my reward for helping you? A thousand is plenty less than I offered the seasoned captain. One of Zamar's bushy eyebrows rises over the other. My hands are tied. Sorry. I'll take it. Y you you will? I, I mean, you will. He snatches your hand and shakes it with two quick pumps. Your vessel will spit fire like a worm with a belly full of fire kelp. He snaps his fingers at one of his attendants and points at your ship. Oh, come to- Okay, so we saved 
80 gold. Or more. Well, this is on discount now. Okay. Oh, we got four of them for a thousand. Oh, that is a deal. And they're straight upgrades. Well, yeah, I'm glad I went that route. What for? Oh, Yeah, <laughs> that all went way better than I could have hoped for. Took out Coda and the gang with one barrel explosion. We didn't have to actually fight them. And we got four cannons for, what, a quarter of the price? And a discount in his shop. Looks like a door. Let's go up here and speak to the cobbler first. A giant? One of the raffoon? No, much bigger. Such is the rumor. Sounds like sailor tales to me. Oh. Hello there. Any harder. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh. Mm -hmm. huh. mm -hmm. I hear you. I've got it. Oh, definitely not what I was expecting up there. Check up here, too. Not nearly as exciting. All right, there's the Valera boy. In the market for decent footwear? You won't find any cat leather around in my shop. Some of us hold ourselves to a higher standard. The merchant gestures for you to speak freely. Let me see what you have. Of course. Come take a look. All right, Shorewalker sandals. We've seen these already. And boots of stealth. I do think these are worth buying. Uh, stealth, maybe not so much. Yeah, I hear you. All right, we'll speak to Zeely. This young man appears either to be composing or practicing a tune on his lute. He stops mid-strum, looking up at you with a friendly expression. Uh, apologies, Lord, if I intrude upon your peace. Inspiration eludes me still. I if you are after some scenery, I suggest the far end of the bridge. 
It smells better when the wind blows in from the sea, of course. I had some questions. I could go with option three, but I feel like that goes against the contract that I have with Azali. So with option one. I'd already read it, but uh, I had some questions. Oh, sure. What about? Your family's been having trouble with the Bardados, right? Guess that means you've spent at least an hour or two in town. Zili sighs. You've never sought revenge. Not like Martino does, no. My uncle works hard to prove we're not thieves or murderers. I fear that Persa is going to ruin that for us. She's in the thick of something too big for her. Why not just tell the guards? Persa's family. That means something. Even if I think she's wrong at best. An idiot at worst. I caught cousin Persa running her mouth off about the job Belda got her involved in. Persa's been spending time in the gullet. In the tavern down there. Maybe she could tell you more. Sorry. I guess you got a mouthful, huh? I really ought to get back to my loot. Just don't hurt Perser, okay? I don't plan to. business with the Valian Trading Company, it will have to wait until morning. We're closed. The guard tips her head in warning. There's no need for you to be here after hours. Move along. What if it's an emergency? If it has anything to do with paperwork or wax seals, which covers most of what's in the building, I'm confident it can wait until morning. Farewell. So I assume breaking in has something to do with the quest later on. Uh, we'll check it out though. You duck down into the canal and find yourself kneeling before an iron grate. The reek of sewage wafting from the other side is powerful enough to bring tears to your eyes. The iron bars are set firmly into the surrounding brick, barring any passage onward. Inspect the grate. The iron appears solid but exposure to the elements has worn away at the surrounding brickwork. The bars extend deeper than these evident fractures, and prying the grate loose would take considerable effort. Uh, look for structural weaknesses. The iron looks sturdy enough, but you are able to spot some telltale signs of corrosion between the bars and the brick. Now that the defect is apparent, the work of bending the bars would prove a less demanding challenge. Send someone to bend the bars. A loose bar snaps away from the masonry, granting you just enough purchase to slip through. Climb through. You carefully squeeze through the opening, stealing yourself for what comes next. In the darkness of the tunnel, you hear quiet retching. You press on with offered sympathies. <laughs> As you progress through the tunnel, a change in the air pressure catches your attention. There is an opening above your head. Um, this might lead into the vault. Uh, the Bardado vault instead of the Valian embassy. Uh, the walls are slick and coated with waste. You find handholds carved in either side of a narrow passage leading up. You haul yourself out of the pit toward freedom. <laughs> out through the toilet of the Valian Trading Company headquarters. Alright, we're not going to stay here after hours. I'm going to leave. I just wanted to gain any experience from doing that event. The lighting in here makes for a flattering reflection. Numerous guests appear to have carved their names into the wooden frame of this painting. Alright, do we have anyone that has more than one stealth? 
No. Oh? Of course. All right, we'll take a look around real quick. I'm assuming they'll have guards in here somewhere. Foes ahead. Yeah. No, nope, we're gonna leave. <laughs> Not exactly my area of expertise. How may I help? You peer down the headquarters latrine, which is scented with fragrant leaves. From the darkness below wafts a more fetid stench. Squeeze through the opening and go down. Pinching your nose shut, you climb down the narrow passage. The muck of a lightless abyss rises to welcome you. Great. Yeah, plus that guard was two levels above us. So no thank you. But now, the way's open if we have that quest shall... later. Our quest to break You ever break thought in about later. changing the color of your fur? Merkberries will stain your skin for weeks. Oh, think I were born blue, eh? Think being this pretty come natural? Well, dang, Seraphim. I never knew you were so fancy. Yeah, but mayhaps I'll be giving them Merkberries a go. I ain't never been marooned before. Now, what can you see anything? Hour six, they should be open. Unless they don't open up till hour eight. Oh, I didn't see uh, Twenu. Oh, it's also possible they weren't there at night. The young Hawana wears a disconcerted frown. He meets your approach with a flicker of a welcoming smile, but it dies down quickly. Please, I must ask a favor. Shy's back for making eye contact, keeping his head lowered. What say? Do you have business with the Valian Trading Company? Uh, not yet, at least. Why? My people of the Duape. We signed a contract with the company. Tuenu looks toward the headquarters with a despondent frown. We were not understanding the terms at the time. I wish to... What say? Renegotiate. But the clerks turned me away. If you were kicked out, I'd wager it's for a good reason. I did not provoke anger, I say. This is not just. My father, the Ranga, took payment from the company. In exchange, they dig for Audra. He speaks with more confidence, as if these words were rehearsed several times over. He did not understand the Valian way. When he dies, the Outlanders will claim our island for themselves father has fallen ill, and the clerk, Luca, stands by the agreement as surely as if it was stamped in his skin. Yeah, I mean, I see the opportunity for a contract here. So what's your plan? I made my appeals to Luca, but my words were as stones dropped down the deepest well. While I am barred from the company office, I can do nothing for my people. Twenu worries one of the many tassels adorning his garb. Why did they kick you out of their office? I showed Luca a new contract, yes? Fairer, more agreeable terms. Luca called me a criminal and summoned his guards. Twenu lets his arms hang down by his sides. What did you mean by a new contract? A man in the gullet offered to assist me. He carried papers, ink, and wax. Oh, he's getting duped again. He helped to write a new contract in the Valian way and to fix the correct seals. Luca, I say he did not like this. 
He took my contract and forced me into the streets. Twenu gestures to the spot in which he stands. I'm pretty sure you were given a forgery. I do not know this word. I would fix, but Luca will not give me the chance. Negotiating with outsiders has not gone my way. Twenu scratches the back of his head, frowning. Mind if I take a look at the new contract? Luca has it secured in a chest. Tangaloa's draws such trouble for parchment, I say. I'll look into it, but I make no promises. Uh, Akira, my thanks. I will remain here by day until justice is done. The worst of his concerns are quickly overshadowed by a broad smile. The company may see you as a spy. Take care that your ore doesn't cut the waves too sharply. But still locked. Headquarters are still closed, sir. Ah, fine. Yeah, may as well rest. If we have to wait two more hours, this will probably be the faster option. And it's free. Really, no reason not to. Now, you see anything you... Hey, Puffer. It's still going on, is it? When will those arrogant louts decide that enough is enough? All right. What are we looking at here? Guard bunks, governor's office, archives, washroom. All right, let's go speak to Luca first. On it. Every leaf of parchment is coated in dense jargon. Captain, done and done. A light's foot and an heavy bullet, I cap. Aye. That probably won't work, but I think we can get into this one. Nice and quiet. Yeah, we're out of range. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. <laughs> the work of a moment. All right, the forge contract. This contract covers an agreement between the Valian Trading Company and the chief of the neighboring Duape tribe. It stipulates that while the Valians have been granted access to some mineral deposits, the Duape will retain all rights to their land until the death of the representative. Attached to the paper is an amendment, however, altering the terms to extend those rights to the Duape to the Duape indefinitely. The seal upon it doesn't seem quite as crisp as that of the original document. Yes? Of course. The clerk busies himself about the room, craving you with a brief, a, a brief glance. He rubs under his eyes and exhales through his nose. Merla, if you are not on the schedule, you are here to waste my time. Examine the clerk. Luca's shirt is spotted with a number of faded purple stains that he recognizes as droplets of wine. Someone has tried unsuccessfully to wash them out. Noting your interest, Luca tugs his jacket closed. The servers at the tavern are clumsy. 
most clumsy indeed. He clears his throat and fans at his neck. What is this place? Stumbling from the street, I see. Lucas sneers and surveys you with a patronizing look. This is the heart of the Valian Trading Company. You would know that if you had a reason to be here. From her office, Governor Alvari carries out the will of the Songretta Mea Compressa. We clerks are the fingers of their long reach. He clutches his hand over his heart and bows sharply. I smoke a Twainu outside. You have a claim on his tribe's land. Ack, a lawful claim, I might add. No matter what the native says to the contrary. He showed up with a forged contract, as if I wouldn't know the difference between our paperwork and theirs. He gestures dismissively out the door. Tawenu is lucky, I only seized the forgery. The Galad is too good for his kind. There must be some agreeable way to sort out Tawenu's problem. Your villager friend would do well not to stand between the company and our prize. The company is allowed to solve problems as we see fit. And right now, Tawenu is a problem. Besides, lying is second nature to the Ranga heir and his ignorant cliente. What is the purpose behind such a contract? Simple enough. We take on the burden of caring for the tribe in exchange for luminous Adra rights. Taweno is myopic if he thinks his tribe can thrive under Aranga in this climate. You know, I can always just sit on the office stoop and tell passers-by how the company conducts itself. Ack, I see. Luca glances away, his gaze wandering anywhere but your direction. The company would appreciate it if you kept our affairs as discreet as possible. <clears throat> he clears his throat and passes you a pouch of coins. Now move along. I have larger matters to resolve than the fate of one insignificant island. Did that work? Or is that just a way to get more money? This room stifles already. Must you crowd it further? About your little problem with Tuenu. <sighs> this again? Pick on plan, can it? Alright, we'll try to appeal to his empathetic side, which I assume he doesn't have. We're talking about the Duwape homeland. This isn't right. This is the homeland they signed away for money, Ak. I can almost guarantee the company will put it to more dignified use. Keep negotiating like this, and you'll drive the Huana into the arms of the Royal Deadfire Company. Bah, shuddery. It would be weakness to concede when we're so decidedly in the right. Now move along. I have larger matters to resolve than... This room stifles a... This again? Pick on plan, can it? All right, so there's always the possibility we could speak to somebody at the gullet and resolve this a different way. We'll hold off on any rash decisions for right we'll now. Do. A cursory scan of the shelves reveals labeled ledgers that date back decades. I've read this before. Alright, so I can't look at that. They don't care that I go in here. Perfect. Nice and quiet. I've got it. I've read that as well. Oh, Paladin of the Five Sons. That's, um, Halogena's order, isn't it? I? Of course. I seem to get mad if I leave. Nice this and up, right? quiet. 
Subtle indeed. <laughs> the work of a moment. No, they don't uh -huh. care. Interesting. Do you mad if I go inside? Also interesting. And what's the point? Yes, indeed. <laughs> Why was it locked? Alvari's key. You took this key from Governor Alvari's office. Yes, I did. A final journal of Jonas. I've read this before as well. That's the Sky Knight Subtle indeed. story. <laughs> the work. In a moment. Yes? Oh, that's disappointing. Indeed. Well, I'm excited to break in. No, there is no disposition loss for saying I'm I have the patience to deal with this uh, politely. Or whatever that one option was. So we might go that route. We'll see. Hmm. Yeah, I'll mull that over off camera. I have no problem threatening somebody to complete a quest. To fulfill a contract. But for now, I'm going to call it here. Our next episode, we'll explore the upstairs, and we might revisit Luca and just go and take care of that quest. But I don't want to lose reputation with the Valian Trading Company either. I'm trying to yeah, play all sides and make sure that I get contracts from everybody. By the way, for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.